Hey, I'm Pat. In this video, I will be covering uh, block casting or shape casting, whatever. Uh, it's uh, two new methods that were added to Roblox Studio very recently. And it's pretty much a, another way of ray casting, really. So what it is, is there's two different kinds. We got uh, sphere casting and we got block casting. Uh, hopefully they'll add some more variations to the castings in the future. But these are uh, both two uh, methods of workspace that, uh, whoops, I wasn't supposed to do that. Both two methods of workspace that what happens is you call them, right? And it's similar to raycast where it casts like, a, well, it doesn't cast a line, right? So raycast, it casts like a line from like one point to the next point. And block casting, what it does instead is it takes a shape, or I mean shape casting, is it takes a shape and it pretty much moves the shape, um, it moves the shape along until it reaches either where it's supposed to get to, like its destination, or uh, per se, there's something in the way, then it hits that object. And that's kind of uh, what it does. So I made kind of like a little visualization thing. If you want, you can try and recreate this. But basically, uh, they even showed something very similar to this in their form post, which I thought was pretty cool. So I wanted to recreate it. And this is pretty much what I got. So you can see, uh, as I move the part, uh, the spheres will collide with the different parts. And you can see, even if it hits an edge here, it will move to this edge and it's very it uses pretty much the sphere as the hitbox instead of like a tiny little line so this could be any size uh it could be yeah any size and if it were per se like a square like this it could be any size and it could also be any rotation so we could rotate it and have it like hit on angles kind of things like that be like angled so it's very useful. Uh, it's mostly going to be useful for things like projectiles, I believe. Um, but there's also other use, great use cases like using them for uh, detections with characters because it's actually kind of hard to like uh, detect, like say a player is floating in air or something like that. You usually would have to use ray casting and maybe cast like three or four different rays to try and figure out where the character is. But now, per se, you could take the player's uh, legs and maybe use those to cast a ray downwards and see where their legs might land or things like that, which I think is actually really interesting. And it could be kind of useful for, you know, like uh, physics simulations or custom character movement, uh, things like that. So let me actually get into how you would write a script for this. So. Uh, it's nothing very complicated, extremely similar to how ray casting works. So, cast, and you can see it's just like a workspace method, like it's a workspace method, just like how ray casting is. So, we can do sphere casting or we can do block casting. I'm going to do block casting first. And, block casting, what it takes is a C frame, and obviously, it's going to use that C frame to define um, the position that the block will start at and it'll also define the orientation that the block will be. So you can kind of have it angled, like I said earlier, right? And then it's size, so which is a vector three. So that would obviously be how big or how small it is. I believe they have a limit. The maximum shape size currently is 128 studs. And the maximum ray length is 1024 studs. So the ray can only go up to 1024 studs and the shape can only be 128 studs big that's their current limitations uh, I guess that's uh, they couldn't figure out uh, what do you call it I'm like losing my mind right now they couldn't they had to limit it because probably there's some performance issues or things like that uh, something also to take note is uh, shape casting is actually very similar to ray casting performance wise as long as the shape is the same size as a normal ray cast So if it's the same size of an as a normal ray cast 
is relatively close to the same thing as a normal ray but as the shapes get bigger and bigger their performance impact will increase with the size of those shapes so that's another thing to take into account um, so back to the thing uh, it takes a C frame and then you give it a size and then we give it a direction very similar to ray where ray casting where we need to give it a direction to go to and then we give it parameters some ray cast parameters if you want to use that um, I think I'm just going to go to my other scripts that I use for the demo actually well I guess alright whatever I already showed it so you get to look at it now but uh, what I did is I took the parts um, OG pause which is pretty much just its starting position and I used that for a new C-frame instead of using its actual C-frame uh, because I was actually having an issue with uh, using its current C-frame uh, you could I probably could have just cached the C-frame or its starting C-frame and used that instead of a position but you know what I got kinda lazy and I just didn't care so I made a new C-frame with the position that it starts at uh, you can obviously just use like its own C-frame whatever but then I gave it the size. I actually realize now I could just use the uh, the part size instead of like say I don't know why I did it this way, but you know it works whatever. So I give it its size and then I give it the direction, which is just ten steads on the z axis because these are square with the world axis. So I don't really have to do any spe anything special with uh, like direction. And then I just give it. Uh, Raycast parameters, which is just the two folders that I have the parts stored in. I could use collection service, but I'm probably going to put this video in my beginner series, which doesn't have a collection service video, so I didn't just to make it more beginner friendly or whatever. So you can see it works just fine, right? It takes the original position and casts a ray until it hits something. In this case, obviously, it's hitting a piece of this model here. And once it hits that piece of that model, it get, returns a raycast result just like any other raycast would, and we can get its position that it hit at. Now, something to take note is that its position is where the part hit exactly, right? So it's not just like any random, it's not like um, the position of the square, I think. I'm pretty sure it actually uses where on the square it hit, if that makes sense. So. You can see right um, that these squares are all perfectly lined up right now but once I do this you can see that they actually start colliding with each other kind of because what they're doing is they're hitting on maybe like an edge right here or something like that and they're going to the exact position that it hit this part at instead of uh, just going to the position where the, like, the block ended at if that makes sense right because uh, you have a block that starts here and it goes and goes and goes until um, per se it hits something like that right so it just collided with this edge right here so instead of uh, giving the raycast result position as the position of this block right here it gives you the position of this collision here so the raycast result position would be right here uh, like right there right if that makes sense uh, I believe that's how that works because after looking at it you can see you know these are all perfectly lined up and they're not colliding with each other they're just next to each other but after I do something like this you can see they get misaligned like there's no block here there's no block here it's obviously over here but even then, you can see that these wouldn't even be directly next to each other, even um, if they were, you know, still like right next to each other, it'd still be a gap in between them, just like how there kind of is right here, right? Even though uh, if I pull this back, these two squares are next to each other with no gap in their original position. So, um, sphere casting works pretty much the same way. Uh, it takes a position instead of a C-frame because it's a sphere, so it doesn't really have a C-frame, right? And then it takes a radius, which is, um, if you don't know, the radius is half the diameter or half the size on 
the spheres one of the spheres is axis axi so uh, for example if we have a sphere like this which is 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 um, its radius would be 0.25 because it'd be half. Uh, each of these are considered the diameter. Half of the diameter would be the radius. Uh, if you know like basic geometry, you would know that. But never know. There's probably like eight-year-olds watching this video or something. But uh, you give it the radius, and then uh, you give it the direction, just like any other raycast, and then raycast parameters. And it works pretty much the same way as the block cast, right? Um, Nothing too crazy. Works the same way as block cast. Uh, you can see as well, like, obviously these are have a little bit more gap in between them because I kind of changed their size because I thought they'd look better if they were, like, uh, a little bit smaller because it gives you, like, a little bit more of a precise uh, vision of what's going on. But you can see um, it kind of falls apart. It's pretty cool. Whatever. So it's very useful for things like projectiles, AOE detection, custom character movement, whatever. There's quite a lot of use cases for this. It's very awesome to see Roblox come out with this, especially since being myself, I really like ray casting. So hopefully this video understand or understands. Hopefully this video understands. Uh, hopefully this video helped you understand uh, ray casting or not ray casting. I'm stupid. Uh, shape casting uh, in Roblox Studio. It's not too crazy. I'll even leave the documentation and the post in the description so you can read that. Uh, yeah, thanks. See ya.